to here, there. It's off. Hmm. All right. So today we are going to get some more work done on Thanatos here. So we're going to do our best to keep uh, her in focus here. Not miss out of, out of frame. Um, under, let me see if I can tilt. Can I show you the vertical? The curve that vertical must band on the helmet, which I'm not 100% sure what part you're talking about, but which which bit on a stick? Talking about you talking about up here, or are you talking about this bit here, or are you talking about like even higher? The one with the right under the A really big and so that looks a lot better on camera than up close um because i bet you watch there you go there's there's a more accurate representation of it but it still gets the point across, All right? You see how it's a little, little rougher when it's in focus. Ugh. All right, we're gonna. So what I gotta work on is I, I do need to fix this curve a bit. Um, it's way too uniform. So I need to break that. Before I do that. I need to take today, my efforts are going to focus on getting these bangles and the stuff on our hand and some, and this stuff down here, uh, worked on. So trying to figure out the best way to get her on camera since it's such a bust piece. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead. I got a whole bunch of stuff. You can see most of my palette duplicated here. Um, Mr. Cheshire, hello. Uh, this is a Michael Contreras bust. Um, this one is no longer in production, um, but you can get smaller versions of it, uh, like this one here. Um, just m m .com with a k um i think there was only like 30 some odd of these made and i was crazy and bought one um yeah so let me go ahead and start and get some stuff out on the palette here i'm going to be using um some Windsor Newton uh, gold, uh, some Windsor yellow, cadmium yellow, brilliant yellow pale, and then for shadows, um, some Terra Rosa and um, burnt umber. So I'm gonna start getting all of that out on the palette while kind of chat up everybody. Just kind of do this for now. Um, yeah, how's everybody doing today? Uh, actually, you know what? What's your what's your what's your bright spot for today? Anybody got any bright spots for today? Could be anything. Like my bright spot so far today is that 
I got to sit down and watch a comedy special that me and my wife had been wanting to watch for a while. We watched the new Rodney Chang, Rodney Chang, um, comedy special. It was pretty good. I like watching comedy specials. Yellow will cooperate with me. I'm going to put it next to this cad yellow that's already out. As you notice, maybe kind of hard to see in the light, but if you know, you can tell the difference between the golds on this piece and up here. Like this is much closer to gold. This is very orange. So I'm, I'm when I first did the helmet, it was a, it ended up closer to this color, and it was just a little too orange. So I'm gonna fix that. Let's see, how do you incur surface? Just thinking in terms of a graph. I, I'm glad that helped you. I, so like how I did, like my mapping for the non-metallic metal on this, I literally took this model before I painted it and got in a really dark room and took uh, a small directed light. Um, actually show you the size of the light because this is something that's very important actually so i use the light that is was this big for this model right this is just a little it's the for a camera right it's a little spotlight you can use it as a flash whatever and i stuck it like like kind of in this area like from down and up and then took a picture and you know increase the contrast on it, made it black and white, increase the contrast on it. And then that's kind of how I sketched out the highlights. Um, now a satin or matte acrylic isn't gonna reflect colors like a metallic surface, right? So it's not an exact thing you need, but it's a pretty good guess. Now a thing to keep in mind is if, it was, if I was to do that same effect like that same thing and then try to do it on a model this big, right? Because that light source is so freaking huge, it's going to completely blow out the shadows. So using a small light for a smaller model, like a 30 mil model is much more effective and will be a lot better to give you a good idea of like light correction. I need to get my hands on some like little LEDs or something like that for smaller models. This thing is so big that you can use like a, a flash and it'll give you fairly close approximation of stuff. Um, just getting all these colors out here. See, do I have any brilliant yellow pail already out here? I do. Right over here. This other brilliant yellow pail from other stuff. I'm so I I I've been kind of putting off on this model. I, I keep um I guess procrastinating on it because it's so daunting. It's very scary. So I haven't really been working on it as often as I should, but um I think it's about time I finally get off my butt and start working on it again. All right, I think I got outside of my umber. Um, let's see. I can just in case I'll give you a permit. I if you're in here for a fairly short amount of time, you're auto like permitted, but Yeah, and that's and that's where I got the idea. Uh I'll have to get something like what WAPL uses because it didn't really click that like the size of the light is important until um, I took a class, I took one of the classes at Adepticon and it finally clicked like, oh yeah, that makes sense, right? 
Um, let's see here. That is way too many. <laughs> um, I don't need a hundred of these damn things, but that'll give me an idea. Yeah. LED finger lights. Okay, well, I'll keep that open and I'll look at that later. Hmm. So, so this side here is not going to change much. I'm not going to really touch this side of the model at all today. Uh, I am purposely, this side of the model is purposely darker, more muted, and the idea is supposed to be directional lighting. Directional lighting is supposed to be coming up from this direction. Um, kind of actually about the angle at this, uh, well, closer to like that angle. Um, definitely means I need to do a little bit more work on the face and stuff like that for shadows. Um, but we're not going to really worry about that at the moment. Um, Yeah, and, and having red, green, blue is actually pretty smart because of different colored lights affect surfaces differently, Like right? Like if you shine the issue with this piece, right? So let me, let me uh, issue with this piece here, uh, red light, uh, green light on red skin, that makes black. So trying to do green OSL on a red skinned demon is tricky and looks weird and was kind of shooting myself in the foot. I, I'm happy enough how it turned out, but like if you glaze the transparent green over a red, you get black. Just like if you shine a green light on a red object, it's black. Or black-ish, right? Just depending on how pure that green or red is. Um, so having different colored lights, especially primaries, red, green, blue, um, actually really smart, but yeah, I definitely don't need a hundred of those things. Did you buy, did you buy a pack of a hundred of them? If so man, I'll buy a couple from you. All right. Uh, I mean, did not prep my work area very well, so it's a, Forgive me while I set up. They're on your wish list, okay. <laughs> uh, just Google Amstig. If you just look, Google just like uh, uh, like colored lighting and photography. Or something like that and you'll get a good breakdown of like you know how light interacts with surfaces um i'm gonna need let's see i need some somewhat larger uh flats here um i don't think i want anything larger than an eight so we'll stick with this brush and do we have another non completely destroyed eight or four. I have a four right there. So I think with an eight and a four, that'll give me a good place to start. And honestly, what I think I'm doing um, is I'm going to grab this gold that I have on the palette and cover everything that's that's on these hands and these bangles here and kind of just rework everything um so we'll see how catastrophic that is um you know presently let me bring this out a little bit um yeah let's let's give this a shot oh this is very stiff okay i just needed to kind of I'll have to look for back. Now, um, I am using um, this Winsor Newton artist gold paint. Um, 
not the greatest. Um, I feel like it has like almost no body to it at all. I'm tempted to get some more. Like Daniel Smith has been making some. Um, Daniel Smith has been making some uh, metallics of their own, and they seem to be a little bit more uh, particular, I guess, is the best way to put that in their paints. So I'm going to see maybe about trying some of those out. Really, I'm kind of just seeing how this looks once it gets a little bit more yellow in it. I'm going to just glaze in, you know, my shadows and stuff um, here in a little bit. I'm just seeing what happens for now. Thankfully, since this model has been left alone for quite some time, the only thing that's going to be wet on this model is what I'm painting today. It'll make things a little easier. I really am just going to, I'm going to just get this gold all in here. I'm not going to worry too much about shadows at the moment. I'm going to reestablish those, I think. Hey, T. Roger. What's your bright spot for yeah, I just botched that. What's your bright spot for today? If anybody's working on anything they'd like to share, please do so. Instagram links are whitelisted as long and well as Discord. Um, just, you know, be a adult about what you're sharing. And if you don't understand what that means, well, then don't bother sharing anything. Happy Heretic, welcome in. Happy Heretic, what is your bright spot for the day? I'm going to get down here as well later work up and then back down. <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna put this thing down so I can just uh, kind of do this. Got off of work a few hours ago. Got some mixed paint. Sounds fantastic. This is, a, this is the first time I've had a, a, well, not opportunity. I won't say it's the first opportunity I've had. It's the first time I've taken the time to paint uh, on this piece since before Adepticon. Um, been three weeks, I think. Maybe four.
And I am, and my goal is to get this done by the second week of July. That way I can have it all nice and cured and varnished uh, in time for the Nova Open. I just got some. Let me get a, this will work. I need a cleaner brush I can pick up. If uh, any goofs I make, yeah, and it is it is um metallic oil paint. I mean, this is all a mix of metallic and non-metallic uh oil paint. What did I just do? I know I just got there. It is um the oil the metallic oil paints that I have um don't have the best coverage. And I don't, I think they're designed that way. Like the way they're designed, they're meant to be painted into stuff, right? Um, let me get a clean little bit of a sponge. Or these. So uh, right now I'm just laying down some Windsor Newton um, gold metallic paint and then I'm going to paint in some uh, actual oil color uh, on top of it to kind of reestablish colors. It was very, uh, this down here was all very orange and I didn't like that. So we're fixing that. So if I knew what I was doing, um, you know, a little bit more experienced with all of these this medium especially with metallics uh, i'd be a little further along also doesn't help that like my eye for um in uh for non-metallic metals is pretty bad uh, that would be next year's uh adepticon classes is doing some non-metallic metal um The difficulty with a lot of with that, unfortunately, is the painting meta for miniatures is generally GW leaning, and I like GW NMM is not how I want to paint non-metallic metal. Because it 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 works for like that that's the style, but it's not what I like, and it's not a more it's neither impressionistic nor realistic. It's its own thing, and I don't I don't want that on my models. So finding a class that's not geared towards that will be a little difficult, but I'm sure there's some people out there, you know. That don't really do that. I mean, I know they there are. I know there's not. That I know there are people who do non heavy metal style, not metallic metals. There's the sentence. Nailed it. English. So good at English. All right, we're gonna we're gonna start working down here too. I'm off camera. Take the classes at Nova. Sick has a semi-private class. If you can't afford it. Um, I'll have to look. Is it, is it like I, I, if it meets those criteria I mentioned, you know, like I just, yeah, um, I'm just kind of gun, like gun shy at taking a class. Like I already kind of, one of the classes I took at Adepticon, while it wasn't a bad class, it was 
like it was difficult for me to uh apply things that i learned in it towards oils um because it was more about the 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 how to use acrylics to do x versus the theory behind the actual cuz i took all uh lighting classes classes on how to do lighting for for models um and one of them was a little more focused on like how to paint up acrylics to work for lighting and i can i still was able to sit through the class and take home something right but it was uh a little bit of a incongruous class for for how i do things And like, it's not even a matter of me just being like, you know, sucking up. It's like, oh, just pun, just use acrylics during the classes and you'll learn. Like, I, I tried to like use acrylics recently and it was just a shit show. Assuming private class is for students, it'll go into it with you, whatever subject you want. That sounds pretty cool, uh, but also sounds expensive. Cause I want to say those classes I saw were like $400. And also going into one of those classes, um, one seventy five. Okay, that's that's not awful. I would have to hit up the teacher privately and be like, "Hey, do, could you walk me through composition? Because that's what I need help on. I don't need help on color theory much. Like I could." Everybody could always use it to refresh it, right? I don't need help on color theory generally. I don't need help on mixing. I don't need help on how to blend. Like that that doesn't matter. I don't need on I don't need to know about how to texture a model. Maybe we'll look about composition. Composition is where I'm struggling. And if that teacher is more geared towards like, okay, paint by numbers, then mm, it's gonna be difficult for me to learn anything from it. So I'll, I'll thank you for that. Let me I'll pull them up. Um, sick willing. Oh, okay. It's the guy who won that. Okay. I mean, that, that's already. Okay. They paint non GW stuff. Okay. I definitely like the stuff that's non GW related. I'm seeing in the feed. Ooh, he painted that model. I painted that one. The uh, ogre with the two katanas in the hat. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I will hit them up and see what they have to say, Doctor Tentacle. I do appreciate that. Um, cause I, I did hit up like in, in preparation for Adepticon, I did hit up a couple of, uh, teachers that were teaching classes and I was like, Hey, I'm going to show, if I show up to your class, I'm going to be painting with oils. Like, will that be a problem? And they were like, you know, they would say like, I have no idea how I would help you. So, uh, it's probably not the best thing. I was like, okay, cool. And that's fine. There's one more person. What you want is Chris Soar. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you have another link, feel free to drop it. Um, oh, I just, I just painted my uh, hair. Oopsie. That I'm going to have to clean up because otherwise I'm going to get that all into my skin. You want composition he's your guy okay i do really appreciate it yeah because that's that is really what i am i am kind of like struggling with um uh 
Like I'm super comfortable mixing paints. I I can blend just fine. You know, the only thing really holding me back on non-metallic metal is composition. The only thing that's really holding me back on, you know, freehand composition. I I don't know where things should go. Nah, that's not the only thing holding me back on freehand. A lot of it is I don't practice free. So, uh, scares the hell out of me. And, uh, yeah. Also, this is a very awkward piece. Um, so if I'm way off camera, I think there's a, like, distraction thing you can do in chat. For points, um, should probably make it cheap. If I'm way off target, please let me know. Yeah, because I'm way off target. <laughs> I think he did a class at Dutacon. Also has a four person. Oh, Eric Swinson. Yeah, I think Eric Swinson might have been the person, one of the people I asked about. Um, yeah, might have been one of the classes that I, I mean, one of the teachers I hit up prior to Adepticon. I talked to um, Repelius very briefly the uh, last night and asked him his opinion on teaching me teaching classes specifically for oils next Adepticon. And he is, he encouraged me to give it a shot. Um, you know, says that my, I got fundamentals down enough where I can get people started. So I think I'm going to throw my hat in the ring and teach a, a limited oil palette class next year um and i'll probably find like a 3d bust print out a handful because i want i'm not going to teach a class and not have everybody doing the same thing like classes that are like these where you're saying um you know hey i'm going to teach every four different people four different things like and I understand composition isn't unique to oils, but depending on the teacher, their way that they approach things, like, that's just been my experience, right? Like, I, I could I could be completely misguided. Um, so, I, I don't, I, 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 I no, I, I, I agree with you. I 100% agree with you. I'm concerned about teachers comfortableness with dealing with a medium that they haven't messed with. Cause like I've already had teachers tell me they weren't comfortable dealing with it. That's all. I think, um, I think, this side, I need to grab my wrinkles. I, 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 I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. To, to be to be more clear I could and I'm I'm actually thinking about trying to take some uh online classes like um so for for example right and this is this is very broad I'm not talking about a specific person but like very common thing right working on non-metallic metal if I go on to YouTube and I search how to do non-metallic metal, um, it's going to be, generally speaking, step one, paint this color. Step two, paint this color. Step three, and so on. I 
don't usually find a lot of info that is more about how to define volumes and determine how light falls on the object. It's here's a sword. This is how you paint a power sword. I don't want to. I don't want to know how to paint a power sword. I want to know how to paint an edge, an edged surface. Like that'll be useful. Like you know, seeing videos, the thousands of videos on how to paint a power sword. Like I don't. And that you're right. That is what references are for. But when it comes to like something crazy like this, I looked. I have a reference for like a Roman helmet that I used to help with this. Um. And that that helps, but maybe trying not to use. I mean, I understand there's nothing wrong with using references. You should use references when you can. I get that. I want to be more comfortable being able to, you know, I want to be more comfortable in my own skin when I'm kind of jumping into the deep end on this kind of stuff, I guess. Uh, yes, yes, I'm looking more for theory. And being able to do a practical, oh, hi, Kixku, hello. Um, you're, you are right to the point where, like, how do, I, how do I explain this? So like when I when I went and did um you know when I was painting this this model right in class, it was helpful having someone who knows how lighting is supposed to work there to tell me, oh, like ask being able to ask me that question, like, okay, what's looking weird to you? Do you know like do you know what needs to be changed? And then like helping guiding me to like what needs to be changed. Or what can be improved upon like that's the kind of thing i guess like you said a guided a guided thing a class might be the best way to do it i don't know maybe i don't know what i want <laughs> um i absolutely want to take um like oil painting class and i've i took one um four hour class and it was based on landscapes and that gave me a little bit of stuff, but it wasn't what I was looking for. The guy was super nice, um, but he was strictly a landscape painter and he couldn't really help me any further than that. Yeah, I'll, I'll look in, I will look into it, Dr. Tentacle. What do you mean? I mean, you know, Wapelia Swapple, you know, he's got some, you know, decades of experience and actual like training, actual, you know, instruction under his belt. And that's the kind of stuff I need. Um, I, re I really do want to take some actual art classes. But it's a matter of availability. Uh, well, granted, now that COVID is less of a thing, because, of course, I started looking into this during COVID, and everything I was looking at was, like, closed, not offering classes this year. Maybe I need to look into that more. The light study book? I did not get the light study book. What light study book? Please share the light study book because I I don't think I have what you're talking about. Um, yeah, I have I have a incredibly lengthy two volume uh thing on anatomy that i was told um is super helpful for 
sculpting, but also because it gets so much into the shape of the body that it's actually really useful for referencing for where stuff needs to go on a model for paint. Um, it is incredibly, incredibly exhaustive. So I have not looked at it much because it is like, like how to rebuild like every single thing about a face, like every little bit. Okay, yeah, I definitely need something like that. Um, and like, I've, I've been shy about like references too, because let me move my light just a little bit further down. Hold on. Um, I got like a scale 75, like um, painting reference thing and like, it's okay, but it's way too hyper focused on um like how to do very specific things with scale seventy five paints on scale seventy five models and like so it's it'd be it's useful if you're painting those models, but two d image okay let's see if I've seen I have seen this book I have seen this well i yeah um. Thank you. I will leave this open and add. Uh, yeah, I have not read this book and I do not have it. Um, oh man, did I? I did like a art book bundle a while back. I need to look at that. I want to say that might have been in it. Okay, I appreciate it. Um. Yeah, because I need I need stuff like that, um, and then it'll just it just comes down to application, right? It comes down to me literally just doing it till I'm comfortable, you know. Because at a certain point, if you're doing similar things over and over again, you know, like exactly where stuff goes. And when you get to the weird stuff, like how do you deal with light? in shapes like this under this situation like you yeah use references but see chapter two of this book helped me more than three months of pain okay author of the new drawing on the right side of the brain and that freaking how many times did I try to get through drawing on the right side of the brain <laughs> oh. okay well thank you very much Dr. Um, yeah a lot of and you know a lot of it comes down to you know being Art and fear, right? Scared to try new things, scared of failure, scared of um, spending, you know, weeks of time uh, total. Not that I've hit that point yet, right? But like spending, you know, 40 plus hours on a piece and doing it poorly, right? And a, and a piece that I can never paint again. There are no more of this piece, right? Like, whatever I screw up here. Like that's that's the end of this piece. But I just, you know, I did make the decision to just freaking jump into this because I couldn't keep fussing around and never painting this piece. I bought it to specifically push myself. Kind of reestablish some of the, it's kind of all matted down.
I mean, no matter what, like I kind of I kind of feel the way that I want to do this model. Uh, no matter what, I think I'm gonna if I'm not completely satisfied and done with it by the second week of July, I'm still going to just take it and varnish it and submit it. I don't think I'm going to, you know, continue to delay me actually uh, submitting this piece. I said I wasn't going to mess with this side, but I didn't think I was going to have this green gold out. So I'm, I'm kind of hitting a couple of these spots just to kind of give it the luster that it used to have, or at least I thought it used to have, but it's kind of lost. Reestablishing some of that. Um, well, because I mean, I'm gonna at a minimum have to transport it. I'm gonna bring it to a uh, competition. Right? And I actually feel that like uh, putting a satin varnish on a lot of my pieces has actually improved it. Like it helps level out stuff. Let's see. Not a lot of skin showing for the most part, just like some skin. Yeah. Are, are, are you typing in the wrong channel, AT Roger? Or do I need to show a little bit more, more skin? What are you talking about?
so confused. Did your links not show up? Did you type way up here somewhere? I'm not, I don't see a link from you, man. There we go. Oh, it's another, there's another King of Death model. Oh, these are one of those unfortunate photo resin pieces. <laughs> Uh, I like the design of the model, I think, but man, they did such a, they do such a shit, whatever printer they're printing these on. But it's not, that's not fingerprints, that's raster lines. That's from the printer. Yeah, I don't, for whatever reason, yeah, that changed. If you send that leak earlier, did not go through. They they do like front fingerprints, but yeah, that's that's from the printer, the steps from the resolution of the printer. And man, I'll tell you because the I've only painted I have I haven't put it together yet because I didn't realize I was gonna get one when I ordered it. But with the holiday, it's like a snow a snow woman pinup that they did for Halloween or whatever. I didn't realize that a first edition was one of those things. Um, I I would rather it be in plastic than their like first run photo resin. Um, I haven't put it together yet because I was like, oh cool, a model with a bunch of 3D print dimples in it. That's awesome. But the only other one I painted, I um I won as a giveaway from Genuine Vision and like here. Can you zoom? Like you can see like on her chest, like the circles from the steps and then her leg, like all of all that texture you see I mean, I know it's kind of hard to, yeah, like, I think the one I have is pink. Yeah, it, the texture on this model was pretty disappointing. I was just like, yeah, it looks like somebody smudged their fingers into it. Though I still say, get yourself these nice little doll base bases for michael's like packs of four for four bucks or whatever they're great little display little tiny display bases yeah i uh, yeah i'd much rather just give me give me freaking cast resin or or plastic like this 3d i understand like th being able to 3d print his home is awesome it's fantastic for hobbyists Amazing. Don't sell me a $30 miniature and give me that. That's, in my opinion, like compared to their other stuff, it's unacceptable. <clears throat> All right. And like it's a cute it's a cute mini like i will paint that other model um you know come october because I, I bought that one and the the halloween trick-or-treaters um which that actually very well maybe my last purchase from kingdom death um can't say i'll never get anything else from them but uh, i will i will paint them they'll i'll wait that'll wait until Next year, or not next year, later this year. We'll see how poor of a decision it was to lay down this metallic and then paint into it. 
You know, that's something that I actually have not been able to find a whole lot of videos on is how to use metallic oil paint. Because I, I honestly think they just, like there's, there's an assumption that anyone who's using it knows how to use it. And it does, it's not the same as regular oil paint. I'm wondering if I should go into the helmet at all with this paint. He says as he goes into the model with that paint. I think on the fire highlights. I'll, I'll, I don't want to get too much involved in that. I mean, let's, let's get back to it, I guess. <laughs> Start getting, getting off target and not, I want to end up back where I need to be. I do still have so many Kingdom Death, um, and ups to do. Getting kind of burned out on them. <laughs> There's a couple that I want to uh, do like some kind of more interesting designs on. Um, I haven't gotten around to taking the time. Let's see here. I need. Brush that I can. Got a tip, but I don't mind if I kind of ruin it a bit. Reviewing. Try using this guy. Let's reestablish some shadows here. We're going to start that with got this uh, burnt umber. Take, I'm going to take that down here. Just a touch of this. Well, Because light, yeah, light, the way I'm having a light show. This here, and on the back sides of this, I 
How is it possible that there is some like unpainted stuff in here? I'm getting kind of right now I probably can't really see too well what I'm doing. Realizing there's some unpainted plastic down here. Yeah, I mean, I should probably even still look at a couple of like just simple non-metallic metal videos just to like stop paying attention to like the names of the paints and just look at it and then try to think, okay, that's burnt umber, that's burnt sienna, that's what. It'll probably help me at least somewhat. Let's see here. So we're going to This is just a mix of raw umber and a little bit of Terra Rosa. Keep making some shadows into this. Yeah, and the shadow, the, the, the light's not supposed to be coming straight down from this direction. It's supposed to be more from this direction on the model. Might be best to kind of hold it like this and uh, use the reflections, you idiot, and paint into the shadows. Then, instead of trying to make everything so freaking hard on yourself,
Let's be a little warmer on this side. <clears throat> Ugh, just so awkward to hold. Why are you so awkward? No, it. The more I think about it, Doctor Tentacle, if you're still around, I, I think you're you're you've got a good point that maybe taking a class that is semi-private, I could get guidance on. I'll just have to figure out what I would like to bring. Hmm. Yeah, because I got I got another really high metal like he he's sitting to the side here that I really want to paint in the near future. This dude, who's like the ultimate exercise in non-metallic metal, and at least for this I can probably find some decent references. Like I know there's some Dutch portraiture of some dude in a breastplate. Um, I'm not sure about the gigantic shield, but maybe. Like I can find references for something like this a lot easier than the you know Thanatos. But this would be a great opportunity to do like some really cool, like reflective, you know, stuff back here and things like that. Maybe that's what I'll do. Um, it would be best to take something you already hit a block on. So take take something I've already put some work into. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. That's fair. I mean, I can I can put some work into that piece before I show up. So it's easy enough for me to paint into and over, you know, what I already have down. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I'll think into it. Uh, mostly it's about the cost than anything else. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would like to think that I'm, I have a, a understanding of my medium enough, where I can be like, okay, I know how to do that in, in this paint. I'd like to think. I'd like to think that I have. Um, enough of a control over how I do things. There's there's always that concern now, right? Like, what if I'm a complete idiot? You know.
You need to bring shadows here, mix some greens to age them out. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah. No, that's... Uh, I, 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 see, I see the wisdom in your words. I see the wisdom in your words. Part of why I really had wanted to like, I, I didn't think to, to bring I don't know why, but I didn't think to bring anything to Adepticon that had already finished that I knew that I would like some feedback on. Let's see. Yeah. No, you're you're not wrong. Um, I have a, a a Roman helmet picture that's similar to that. Um. just me wanting to fight like the idea of having just like a completely like blown out white in near white section on a like because there was that that subtle difference between not subtle it's actually not subtle at all but there was that difference between 2d and 3d art right like i definitely need to have like there's that really bright you know kind of towards the center of the helmet uh focal point like, and that's kind of what I was trying to do here. And I need to do a little bit more here. Um, yes, but you're forcing perspective, right? And you can encourage perspective with a piece, which is what I am trying to do. Um, the, cause the, the perspective for this model, the like golden angle, right? Is this angle. Like, this is the angle I'm painting towards. You know, yes, there's stuff going on on this side and I still have to paint it and make it look somewhat interesting. But like this right here is going to be the golden angle because you're going to have, that way you're going to be able to see this big freaking cog sticking out of her back, which is not really painted at all yet. Um, You know, and then, yeah, there's all this stuff going on back here, but while I'll be painting it, I'm not painting it quite as interestingly, right? Still gonna be gross. Uh, she's the whole thing is a big bruise essentially. Googling and looking at pictures of bruises is um, it's hard to actually kind of see. Eh, if I like turn the model, you can kind of see all the differences in the colors. Um, but googling bruises not pleasant. Uh, looking at, um, but yes, I I do want to go back to this helmet I, I want to work on this now but I, I realize that on this helmet this here and like right here there needs to be like really bright and it's close but I need to like darken stuff around it I think to make it um, more better more better. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. Um, I'm I'm I am having issues with the composition of the shadows. Yeah, it is pretty high. Like I like, it is as close to white as I can get without painting flat white on some of these parts. Um, and there will be a couple little, little ticks, and there is actually is a couple a little dots of of white in there. Um. But I am I am having trouble with the shadow portion of it. Um, like the opposite. So like that skull eye, yeah. Like this needs to be darkened in for sure. Um, a lot of like around around like the backside of these bits. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I, 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 I recognize that I have a lot of work still to do <laughs> for sure. You know, I have, I have some deeper, you know, I do have some deeper shadows, but I need to, I need to do something up here and like right here for sure. My hand is cramping.
wouldn't be so bad this thing didn't weigh so freaking much. <laughs> uh. So that and that's that's the kind of thing that I'm just I I don't have the experience with enough yet to really be like bam 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 bam, you know, knock out all these shadow placements and and move on. See, do the film noir things and see where your light and dark values are. Yeah, I mean, I, I can actually. You know what? Why not? Let's see. I really wish this was like a quick key I can do. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'd have to, like, I don't have any quick actions for my actual camera. I can do the entire scene black and white. Um... Yeah, you're right. I'm going to screenshot this. Yeah, and having having those tones is important, but also yeah, the value needs to be changed for sure. Um cuz I got, you know, my my this here is good. You know, that this needs to kind of have a more gradual blend to some of it um you know this is a this isn't bad maybe bring some a little bit more in here but like this definitely needs a lot more and then this down here is <laughs> you know that's why i'm working on it it's all <clears throat> took a screenshot of that let me go ahead and True. I, I but I do want to bring a little bit like this. This the band. You know the band of color. I got I got to hold it in the right way and find that nice band of color and kind of just keep it fixed in my hand and paint paint in these uh kind of strikes of light down this way. Um. Uh, I'm going to say no, because I'm not sure what you're referring to. Trying essentially the lines that goes to lead it's going to lead to your focal. All right, so this would be, so this here would be the top of the triangle effectively, like. I'm not sure. Twist it to the view you want people to see, let's see. I mean, the idea would be this, like from the camera, I think this is the golden view. So, so ju like just right there, trying. So like here, helmet, and then like here. So I gotta do I gotta do something kind of somewhat interesting here, then and then I get I guess it does like both arms probably and then the helmet. <laughs> Look at the smack paint. Um okay. So the triangle doesn't have to be like edges of the model. Okay. Just a view. All right. Yeah, I think I think because there's all these these bangles too are gonna have a bunch of gemstones in it, so I can definitely make like 
this these these like two or three gemstones really popping and then there's one here too um yeah okay no, i gotcha yeah i guess jumps the face is like a shadow cut okay no, i got you no okay yeah like by having multiple brighter areas it convinces them to look at it in that direction i get to catch that right okay yeah and it's like it's a challenge too on a I, you know a piece this big like to, to force that i guess too like it feels really easy if i have you know Ugh. Much smaller model, a bit easier to, to force that. <clears throat> yeah, like I, I honestly, um, I am not upset that I got this piece. Uh, it is, it is teaching me a lot. Um, but there's a lot about composition that I think I just don't quite get. Um, where it would maximize um, my abilities, I guess. I don't really know how to say that. All right, so I think, I think I'm going to, I want to keep putting my oily hands on. And as I put paint back there, that's why I never painted those gold pieces back there, because I needed to hold it back. Dang it. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna keep we're gonna keep at this. Yeah. Like I I was like why why haven't I painted these things back here? No, oh, I was gonna wait to do that. Pretty much last. Oh well. I've been playing myself a lot lately with with painting stuff. It's been acting a fool, bamboozling myself. Reestablishing, like I said, these shadows that kind of blew out with that paint earlier. And then I'm gonna to have to definitely throw in some higher highlights in a couple spots. Still using that mix of a little bit of burnt umber in Ross, uh, burnt umber in Teresa. Yeah, like when I was when I was painting that Oni with the green OSL with the red skin, uh, the the teacher was like, "You kind of backed yourself into a corner here, man." <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I did, really, really, really did. I went I went hard mode right off the bat there, trying to. Instead of just doing, you know, let's just do, you know, a nice, a nice red, you know, firelight OSL on normal human skins. Like, nah, brah. Green on red skin. Go big or go home. But to be, like, actually, to be fair, though, like, doing that actually kind of forced me to really think about stuff. And I think I came out better for it. But... I kind of shot myself in the foot there. All the tops of this gold here actually should not be very shiny because of the light direction. And then 
this needs to be knocked down fairly significantly. The only thing that really stands out to me is, I don't know if I can actually fix it, is I ended up putting texture into the helmet with the shitty paint that I used. Um, I'm hoping that when I do varnish it, that levels out. It's, yeah. And actually while I'm at it, this looks really off up here. I know it wasn't supposed to be messing with this right now, but that's way off. It's like lemon yellow right here. All right, let's uh, move back down here for a moment. Again, that's coming up this way, so this is gonna be slightly darker here. Anybody coming in? Working on the one third scale Thanatos bus by Michael Contreras. Um, it is hopefully going to be a entry for me into Nova in uh, early July. Um, I'll struggle busting my way through it. If you're working on anything you'd like to share, please do so. Instagram is whitelisted. Um, there was Discord. The as long as it's art related, you're welcome to share. Clean that up. That was like some stray paint there. We're also pushing our way to that big 500 follower uh, giveaway. I am not 100% sure what I'm going to give away yet. My giveaway set of oil paints, actually. I think that's what I'll do. I do have one more set that's hanging around. Uh, so the way that it might be easier just for me to ship it directly to you from anybody who wants it from like where from michael's then i it would be from my own house yeah 
give away a starter set of Winton oils, I think. A sloppy job down here with the uh, edges. I'm gonna have to repaint a lot of this red. That's okay. I did not spend a lot of time painting the red. Let's see. Deal water down in bottles. Um, so I have, I have a mix right now, Dark Tentacle. I had, when I first started, uh, about two years ago, I took all the paints I had and did that. So I still have a bunch of bottles, but as they either run out or I gave some away to a local uh, painter, um, you know, I have a bunch of just, you know, tubes with like actual tubes on the side of my uh, stuff now. So it kind of just depends. Um, I I would no longer recommend it. I would only recommend it for someone starting out to if they get the like a starter set, right? And they're having trouble learning the consistency to then do just the starter set get used to painting with a limited palette, learn the consistency, and then just not bother with using the dropper bottle stuff because so many of my dropper bottles, the consistency is way too wet and quite a lot of them are way too thick. Like getting it out of the bottle is a problem. Um, the ones that are way too wet, I like gotta stick them on the palette and just let them sit there forever. So they like they evaporate out some of the thinner. Um, and it took me a long time to be like, why am I having such issues with this paint? It's like, oh, it's because it's way too freaking thin. Like I'm painting with it and I'm pulling paint off of the model. It's like, well, it's because you idiot, like it's, you know, 60% thinner. You made it way too wet. So yeah, you're struggling with it. So I'll get my, my, my current suggestion is, you know, only if you're struggling with, with it to even bother. And then otherwise, you know, only do it for a very limited amount of the paint. Yeah, and it just, it just takes so much time. Like the amount of time I spent mixing paint, like I have I have like sixty oil paints. I I dropper bottled probably forty of them. Like that took forever. It's not like the time sink is just so big. You can thin them well enough on a palette, you know? I personally would suggest using a glass palette like I have here. Um, and by a glass palette, I mean a $5 picture frame that I airbrushed the back of uh, a flat gray and then turned over. And the reason why I suggest that is you can get a much clearer idea of the consistency of your oil paint than with cardboard and or um parchment paper i use i i only started using the glass palette for like maybe the last three or four months and i 
have such a better feel for the paint now. Now, granted, it could just be now experience with foil paints enough, but I find you can gauge the thinness of the paint a lot better. And it's easy to clean up. I just have a little razor scraper that you buy, like a paint scraper from uh, the hardware store. You can get them in different sizes, but like I use, I use this thing. Got a little razor blade that you can pop, you know, flip around, and it comes with a couple razor blades, and you just scrape off the paint, and you're good to go. Costs like two dollars, three dollars maybe. Could probably get a silicon one and the same results, but I just saw it at the hardware store. And I was like, oh, that's exactly what I was looking for. Cool. Moving on. I'm glad I did not connect that freaking giant hog to her back. Oh, man, it would make this thing even heavier. What is going on here? Why is that? Oh, I don't want to do that. Why does it look so gray right there? with that later. I'm not going to deal with skin tones right now. one of the biggest tricks with you know learning to use paint out of the tube is just not wasting it like putting out only as much as you actually need um i always find myself i generally find myself you know i've gotten better at it mind you but for quite a while i was putting out way too much paint A lot of what I'm, a lot of the color I'm putting out of these edges is a little more red because of the red being next to. Not perfect, but. Line a darker color down there, break up the plane of color.
Music's probably too loud, huh? Felipe, hello. Thank you. This is um, Thanatos from Michael Concharos. Uh, this is a one-third scale version. Um, so if you look him up on the website, he sells two other versions of it. Um, a a seventy-five mil full body, and I think a one one eight scale bust. I think it's one eight scale. Um, I've painted both of those, and now I'm throwing my hat at this insanity because I don't know better. All right, I think next step, grabbing some um, of the iridescent white and some brilliant yellow pale and uh, working with that to do some highlights on all this stuff I've been putting down. Yeah, there we go. One thing, uh, Dr. Tentacle, don't thin out your um, metallics if you do have any. Um, it's they're the metallic oil paints, at least the ones that I the Windsor Newton ones, are very finicky. Um, and you may end up just fighting them quite a bit. Before I get into this, I'm gonna take a quick break. Um, Felipe, if you have anything that you're working on, um, you can share Instagram, Discord links, love to see what you're working on this evening. Um, and uh, you know, if you got a bright spot for today you'd like to share, you can share that as well. I'll be back in just a moment.
All right. Everybody up there, cheers. Hopefully everyone's having a pleasant weekend. We're going to get back into this here in just a moment. Um, yeah. I, um, you know, re reflect briefly on uh, Adepticon and how absolutely wonderful it was to uh, be able to meet all the people I met. Um, it was a fantastic experience. If anybody out there has been thinking about going to a convention that for, for this kind of stuff, definitely would recommend it next year. Uh, being at Fort Wapple with all the painters was great. Taking the classes was fantastic. Um, I didn't do any gaming. Uh, I, I kind of regret not doing it, but I also had a blast just hanging out in the paint area. Um, I hope to have a similar experience at Nova. Um, we'll see. I know that Brush for Hire is going to be there. Um, I'm not sure about anybody else off the top of my head. Um, but I'll be taking one of his classes. He's, I'm going to take one of his... Um, he's doing a class on uh, non-box art painting. So just kind of take an opportunity to do a class that does something kind of off script, which would be kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, definitely recommend if you got a local con to give it a shot. Um, painting in groups, you know, th this is always this is always nice, right? But painting like in person with groups of people is is always uh, really nice. And um, just you know, trying to bring that positivity more towards more into the stream and, and encourage people a little bit more, be a little bit more um, explanatory when I do stuff talk through the process a little bit more because I find that sometimes I do end up painting in silence and that, that ends up being not the most interesting thing for everybody, right? Um, so try that a little bit more. And, uh, you know, I appreciate, uh, you know, Dr. Tentacle, you hanging and, and chatting with me with this stuff and uh, make me think about a little bit more about stuff I need to do in the future. So I do appreciate that. And yeah, so again, cheers. Got myself a little bit of scotch with some uh, homemade grenadine and little odds and ends. It's pretty good. Oh. The tip to making a good grenadine is one or two dried Szechuan peppers and a touch of orange blossom water. Um. Taking a step back towards the whole metallics uh, thing. So far, my experience has been with pretty much these. I don't have any, the only two metallics I have are a bunch of Windsor Newton ones and then this one tube. I have an, I have another one of theirs I haven't used. Um, that's a, a aquamarine, but these are the only metallics that I've messed with. At the Windsor Newton ones, I mean, they're both, you can kind of see how, maybe not super clear, but they break apart real easy, especially this, this gold, this Windsor Newton. If you need to thin them, I would suggest using like a, either using linseed oil or maybe even a Galkid. Putting thinner into them breaks them, breaks them down quite a bit. Um, I think, because I can't find really good videos on this, I think the metallics are more meant to be more or less dry brushed over a surface on a canvas to give that slight metallic look, which is kind of what I tried to do here, maybe with a little too thick, but I think it's more meant to be like a hint of like the thing that you've already painted gold or whatever. It's supposed to be the hint of that in the painting. Um, I need to dig a bit more, but there's not a whole lot that I've seen that really dives into it. Um, there's plenty of like, like videos from like Windsor Newton here, we're gonna show you what this looks like on a swatch. Like I don't, that's great, but it doesn't tell me much. Um, Daniel Smith's freaking pages are like worthless. Like 
I mean, I really, this is a beautiful color and I really like the paint, but like <laughs> a lot of their paints are just like, here's the paint. Okay. You're not gonna like tell me. I mean, you showed me a swatch of some of them. That's kind of neat, but I'd like more info, please. All right. So what I'm going to try to do here, try, Find a good angle. I want my viewing angle. This is going to be kind of hard to, to, to maintain. Um, yeah, it's it's really it really is just a matter of this for those metallics just to be careful with how you thin them. Um, okay, so I want my highlight line to be. Pretty much like that, I think. Let's see. Why is there green right there? Hold on. What happens. All right, I know I'm not supposed to be messing with this part, but that looks really awkward. All right. Um, okay, okay, okay. Viewing angle. I want you to be viewed from where my eyeballs are here. Now, camera. Like that. I'm gonna be using the camera because the way that it deals with light I'm using the camera as the reference for where I want my higher highlights to go it's going to be a little tricky but we're going to try it where's my relief grab some of this brilliant yellow pail I'm gonna go ahead and order myself an actual tube of Brilliant Yellow Pale. I foolishly thinned this stuff out because I got the little like starter Williamsburg set and I thinned out the entire tube into a into a squirt, you know, squirt bottle. And I thought that it was nice and thick. And then like once it did this final mix, it turned super liquid. So that's consistency is effectively ruined. I mean, I could still use it, but I need to just buy a tube of it. All right, so I'm mixing in this um, iridescent white. It's not quite a metallic. I don't think iridescent white uses mica, or if it does, it's a different consistency. And it's more to add kind of like a shimmer quality to a paint you add it to instead of changing the color. I'm gonna add this to this brilliant yellow pale here. And we'll see how that works out. May be a huge mistake. We may have to summon Job. But all right. All right. Oh man, this is gonna be so tiring on the hand. When I did my 12 hour stream, when I did my first pass of this, my freaking hand, like you see how kind of it's already kind of pinkish. It was freaking bruised. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do that, I think. So. But, uh, I'm kind of just going to do a quick and dirty straight line down the side or down this edge. That way I have a, I have a guideline. 
work with. And this here is going to be a gemstone, so it's painted gold right now, but I'm not going to worry about paying it any further. If it gets paint on it, it gets paint on it, but that's not what I'm not concerned with it. Um, I have three really experimental paints to make and then try on these gemstones. I have some chameleon pigment that is no shit uh, $3,000 a kilogram, or was it three or 30? It was something stupid, but I got a sample of three different ones for free at a pay shipping, and it was just enough to make about 10 milliliters of paint, which is not bad. Like I could make about, I could make about this, this much paint with it. <laughs> So not a whole lot. This is a 15 mil tube, so I can make like maybe eight milliliters of paint with it. Um, because I started taking some of the Prolex paints, like this is the Prolex Duochrome Blue Green. I went ahead and, and turned into an oil paint. Um, I haven't tried these out yet. I don't want to try it on this model though. Um, the consistency looks fine when I put it in the tube, but God knows when I push it from the tube and then start painting with it. But I picked up those chameleon paints and they look really neat. And I want to put them on the gemstones because I there's a there's like a good chance, well not a good chance, there's an even chance I guess that they'll look very much like like hematite or um you know those really kind of colorful polished stones when I use it. We'll see. Okay, back to this. We got got that. So this line, I want this line to keep keep traveling. So we're gonna do we're gonna do here as well. Much of that there too. And these are just gonna be the highest highlights. I'm obviously gonna put some more. Um, because here needs some well what I might actually have to do is mix in a little bit of the cad yellow into that to transition that out a little bit more that's okay I'm, I'm kind of sketching value at the moment there's nothing wrong with that you can sketch value with oils if you want to no one says it can't. Don't normally do that, but. There was a Ben Cantor class I took of light. He started a lot, of, like that was what he focused on is sketching out rough, 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 sketching out your light sources. And I think maybe next time I do a bus that I want to make have some um, bit more mood to it. Uh, I'm going to try maybe to sketch out very quickly, very roughly uh, values. And by values, I mean just like paint white on where I want the light to be. Um, that way the transparency of the oils will show through, like the white will show through those transparent oils and make it more vibrant, more, more uh, vivid. And that would maybe help me kind of think about that. All right, we're still doing this. Means I need white here. Thank you, camera, for helping me, helping me cheat a bit. And it's getting really cramped doing this, but up oh, that's good. Oh. 
Oh, okay. Then what about at the bottom here? Actually, you know what? I'm kind of playing this wrong. I got a good idea. If I can't, if this table goes along enough. Because I got, I got a, oh, I'm not going to blind out the camera. I got another little slide light here. Oh, let's see. Let me help me get that directional lighting a bit better. It's going to be awkward for a bit. A second here. It's not going to look great on, on your end for a moment while I try to kind of check some stuff. Some directional lighting, because the way I kind of envisioned it, I'll take a screenshot so I can have a light value look. Pardon the confusion there. Let's see. We'll take this. We'll cut that. I'm going to use that to have a good light focus instead of me having to fight my wrist. Do that. So I also want a band down here. That needs to be further down. Say that's gonna be. Oh no, that was that was about right. Say then here. That means that across kind of like probably enough, kind of a bright section here.
Mm. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, okay, no, that's not right. Mm. Oh, shit. This is when you start using little sponges for stuff. Let's see, so we're gonna put, yeah, closer to here. Right down this little center line. That means that this catches, that'll be more interesting anyway. And then this catches, and then this catches. Man, a, a low res a low resolution photo of this looks freaking sick. <laughs> that catches. Of this catches. Should have done this a long time ago. Instead of trying to fight. Let's see. And then for here, those values pop up about here, which duh, fun. This is where you put the light for the freaking arm. So yes, the light on the bangle will also be there. Why did I bother sketching in that line if I didn't want that to be the you know, sometimes I feel like a fool. Sometimes. I wonder what the heck was I thinking or not thinking? Like, come on, bro. Did use the own, your own your own freaking thinking like you've already done the work why don't you just like continue using the work you know let's see i gotta give my hand a break Ugh. i need to save this before it accidentally disappears i'm gonna save this save How's everybody doing out there? Still hanging in? I am going to be um, unable to stream for the next 
week and a half, maybe two weeks. Um, I will be out of town, so I'm not going to be able to take care of. I, I may, I doubt I'll even be able to catch streams. Still be on the road a lot, so I may be kind of ghosting Twitch for next, like, uh, well, starting Monday. After Monday, I'm going to be out for a while. So. You no longer see me for a bit. I'll, I'm okay. I'm just at work. And taking a workcation. Take care of some stuff for work and then I'm gonna be out for a bit. It's here. It's here. Catch up in a nice big wedge here. I'm going to feather all of this out here in a minute. Let's see. See. Referencing here. We move into the hands. We're going to have.
All right, I think we're gonna start trying to feather this out here. I think I got most of those value references sketched in. Why do I have a pop up? Why does this pop up? Why do exist pop up? All right. So what I'm going to try to do here, and I'll probably have to re um establish some of the higher highlights we're gonna try to feather this out now feathering normal oil paints seems pretty straightforward but for whatever reason feathering this stuff always seems you know, complicated i'm gonna load my brush up with just a touch of this gold Usually if I blend, I'm not going to bother loading a brush at all, but it might be too big, but we're going to see what happens here. Well, hold on. Let me, let me kind of tweak this up a little bit more here. This might be the better way to do this because it seems to be operating the way I want it to. Yeah, kind of like I'm just doing it with this sprawl brush then trying to feather it out with the uh, flat. My, my only issue now looking at this is that it looks so much different than the helmet. God. I don't want to have to do that helmet again. Oh. 
uh, this is the downside of me taking so long to get back, like to not do all of the metals at once. I'm not, I don't have a uniform like technique at it. So it looks weird. I'm gonna have to think about that. Cause now uh, this is like the third pass at the, the metals and uh, it's slowing me down quite a bit. Yeah, that looks so much different. I mean, I like both. I like the way they both look, but what I did up here was very different than what I did down here. Do I care? Do I care? I gotta take a, a second here. Maybe it won't look so out of place once I once it dries. Maybe that's the only real difference. Now granted, here I am using almost a near white. I think here was a bit more yellow. Bring that up a little bit. Yeah, I think. Because I wonder if I start with some of these higher highlights like I'm doing down here, if it'll it'll bring everything together again. Let me let me I'm gonna finish messing with all of these feathers, feather outs, all this crap, and then fry it with like the help the where I want the highest highlights up here and see what happens. A feeling I may have painted myself into yet another corner here. Oh. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna switch up this music. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna get uh very niche. Go. I'm gonna get super niche. Play some they might be giants for a bit. No way all of like two people will have any idea what the hell I'm listening to. When the morning, when the morning breaks down. Yeah, I think I think the thing that's just standing out the most is the fact that I went too white. Well, maybe maybe try a little bit of yellow into it. Maybe that'll make me happy. No, because that's not white enough. When the lights come on, come on, when the sun is gray. Is that really changing how it looks? What I could maybe do is once this dries, is uh, glaze in just a touch of yellow, some some Windsor yellow maybe. Yeah. I think that's I think that's what'll end up having to happen. So what do I want to do from here? That's the question. Um
Okay. Dare I try to mess with the helmet? I dare because I need to get this piece done. So, here. I'm, I'm fiddling too much with all of this. I wish I had memory like I do for the Miami Giants lyrics. Like I can remember the lyrics to like 300 They Might Be Giant songs, but I can't remember people's names. From Bayside, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not familiar with Bayside, but it's uh, They Might Be Giants. It's, it's John and John from from the Young John. Let me let me play an actual song that people might know from them. Let's see. Let's see. Um. Where is? What am what which which actual record is that on? AT like he they got he's got some cool stuff. Got some cool stuff. Um, let's see. Where? Yeah. 
Let's see. Yep. I mean, I. Where is he? Gave him. I gave him a go. He was fun. He was he was a real quick, um, you know, straightforward piece. But you know, I did some really like rough metallic on there, and you know, painted him like the the picture, right? Straightforward. Giving him like a weird white scruff looks weird, but like that's what the mo like the character model, you know, the 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 Lionel has like white. After clock, you know, five o'clock shadow. Okay. Give me a second here. I got to fix this. Music. They might be giants. What album is that on? Uh, it's a, a can't be right, but okay. I'm gonna do, here we go. Nope, that is not. Go. Here we go. Also staring at this one. Let's see. From Chimera. Let me embiggen this. Why won't let me embiggen it? Can't hate tiny pictures. That is a I like the design of how it stands. I think that's pretty cool. I like I like I like the bottom half a little more than the top, than the top half. And as somebody who paints a whole lot of pinups, top half isn't that interesting. I mean, I can't really say that. The hair is cool. The whole V, you know, plunging neckline thing is meh. But I actually really like the bottom half of that. Not even Daniel Smith has PBR 25. Yeah, all I saw, all I did is find the Holbein one that you mentioned. Ooh, I like that. I like the horns in that weird headpiece on that Shari Soul one. You know, you know, it's really like on a moon landing. Mortis, how you doing, man? Caught you a little bit the other night. Last night? Last night. Last night. Took me a while to, I don't know why. Took me a while to realize that you were like co streaming. <laughs> I'd never watched you. I'd never caught your stream before. So I wasn't sure, like, what was going on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, when I, I watched it for a bit and I was like, what is going Oh, he's talking to somebody else and they're doing a giveaway. And I, because for a while, I, I don't, I wasn't watching you. I was just listening to you while I was doing some stuff. So I thought, the other person was you for a bit because it was literally the first time I've been able to get into your stream. Let's see. Okay. <laughs>
let's see. I think I'm going to just have to start moving towards the helmet and rethink in my life choices. Um, so I really think that this up here is all funky. So I'm going to re lay some color down into it. Going on. Hit on the head with a frying pan. Lives his life in a garbage can. Worse than that, is he oppressed at his home? Feel totally worthless. Greater than nothing now. And A.T. Roger, as cultured as you are, I hope you know who the Bama Giants are. Meta culture yourself. You're a man of culture, right, A.T. Rogers? Who's that playing? Guitar. Did this thing seriously dry up on me? I'm not going to bother with that right now. And none of your. <laughs> sure. Have I shown you the piece yet? I'm gonna I'm gonna put this off the side for a second. Let me grab the uh, the next piece I'm working on. Well, not next next, but the next garage kit. He's not glued down yet, but this is something Mayatsuma Hime, I think, is the, the this piece that I'll be doing in a, in the future. I got I'm gonna put her on a on a base and whatnot. But yeah, that <laughs> looks, dude. This had seventy something pieces to it. Assembly was the worst. And yeah, like absolutely the worst to assemble. Um, but I left her, so like that's that's what the I had to heat bend so many pieces to get it all to fit <laughs> on. So I had to I had to heat bend uh so many pieces to wait, like this. There we go. Um Okay, we're going to cut out the live stuff. Live stuff is not so great. Um, so the flowers was only one, two, three, four, five. The flowers themselves were only six pieces. But the tree was, this was one piece, two pieces, three, four pieces for the tree, I think. 
Um, most of the pieces I honestly were on the uh, like her. She had she has a lot of pieces. Um, but a lot of heat bending, a lot of mold line removal, a lot of mold lines that I won't remove because I can't be fucked to anymore. I spent I spent way too much time prepping this model, and this is gonna. I mean, I'll, I'll when I finish it. You know, I'll submit it to E2046, but it's not like it's going to go into a real competition, I don't ever think. Um, unless I do, like, a real diorama for it. Um, ah, don't break, please. It's awkward. I fit into my little staging area. When I'm not airbrushing, I use my uh, airbrush hood as a control holder for all the stuff that I'm working on. Yeah, I think so. I'm. I'm. I don't think I'm going to finish it um, by the time that this is what August I think is the closeout for that competition. Um, I'm either going to submit Tifa or if I get around to doing. Um, the evil one bust. I'll do that one too. Uh, yeah. All right. Maybe maybe they don't have a giants isn't the right energy for the stream. I'll, I'll switch back here in just a second. Did I ever? Let's see. What else do I have that I can play? I got so much stuff. I don't care about getting muted right now. So let's just do this. Play. There we go. We'll do some we'll do some some cake instead. Yeah, I might end up mortis. I might end up having to just try out the uh, Holbein um, paint. Granted, there are a couple of tubes around random places on the internet that have the Windsor Newton tube of transparent maroon, you know, and it's not much. Um, so maybe I'll just buy another tube just to have another tube on standby. What's weird though is that pigments in. Is it in purple matter, I think? No, it's in purple lake. So like that pigment you can find in purple lake, but you can't find it by itself. You can still buy purple lake from Windsor Newton and it's got PBR 25 in it. And it's 23, I'm not sure what pigment violet 23 is off the top of my head. Yeah. Then no man. Is it Diox? Okay. I should know that because I Yep, there you go. There's there it is. Right on there. I should know that. So yeah, like the purple lake is Diox Violet and the Benzo Brown. I'm not gonna try to say the whole word. <laughs> 
Let's see, where's my reference? Where's my reference? Because I think. made this paid job so freaking complicated for myself. All right, I need to look at this from a better angle so I can think. Bomb Korea every night. Like a little hair in there, and that's gonna drive me crazy. See if I can actually pick it up, it's cured into the oils. <laughs> Nope, I don't think I'm going to be able to get that out of there without carving that out. Easy Let's come in. Wait. I think I need a, I definitely need a break in the um, color here. Let's touch this. Uh, anybody else working on anything? A little bit from AT Roger earlier. I haven't quite caught up with um, Knowledge Fight yet. I'm I'm almost done with episode six six six. I think there's one more that I got to listen to. And I'll be caught up. Man, listen and listen to those deposition episodes. It's just. 
I guess just a new level of disrespect. <laughs> like, like it really gets me when, and this is very common, not very common. There's a ter particular type of person that does this kind of thing. And it's, you know, the, the, the apology that is only apology because they suffered consequences and not because what they did was wrong. Oh, it blows my mind. I mean, I guess it shouldn't blow my mind because it happens so often, but like, that's freaking like freaking, you know, child shit. That shit the kids do, right? I'm gonna kind of repaint over this so I can blend a little better. We got a suitcase. I'm gonna go live. Well, somebody's dick is super hard out there right now. I'm driving the loudest fuck car. Watch out, ladies. Suitcase. You're like, what the hell is this dude doing singing? Like, you're just telling me to shut up. <laughs> I don't listen to music. I used to listen to music like every waking moment and then got into podcasts so then i started in the podcast so now i kind of miss my the days that i used to do nothing but listen to music I miss the days of going to karaoke suitcase many many a moons ago i was actually a voice major in college and decided after realizing that voice classes are worth one credit or two at the most it was going to take forever to graduate so you still needed to get the 120 whatever hours to graduate so like i needed like 80 credits <laughs> I've had to take like something like I can't remember what exactly what the math was, but I had to like I would have had to take in something like thirty six voice classes in order to get enough credits to graduate after all the electives and stuff like that. It's like I don't have I don't want to spend ten years in school. As much as I loved doing that stuff, that was just impossible. My my foolish young dreams of of being a singer died in the early two thousands. Just 
still quite like going to karaoke. Have a chance to do a little bit of singing. My voice is definitely not quite what it used to be because I don't sing the ranges that I used to sing. But still enjoy it quite a bit. Times before. All right, so I completely ruined my nice, beautiful highlight up here. So let's unruin it. As uh, Dr. Tentacle PhD was saying earlier, I definitely need to push shadows down. So that's kind of what I did here is this, it was way too bright. I'm gonna push more shadows down in here, but now that I've pushed more shadow in here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the highlight back in it. Try to do that here. I want, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much need to make this edge completely. Like a touch of the yellow, bring that out just a little bit more. Get down. That and mm, is that the wrong direction for those highlights? It's on. No, no, that's okay. I can have direct. I can have highlights doing this here. I can highlights doing that up there. It's okay because I already have all of these highlights established.
Do you? See how that's looking with the throw it into the, the black and white mode here. Black and white mode. All right. Your bread and wine. How's that? How's that looking? Anything look out of place particularly? Okay, I, I like that better than at least at a minimum, I like that better than what it looked like not too long ago. I think I want to put that out. Oh no, that is no bueno. Edition teaching it never seems to ash is living comfort eagle. You better come with cash. This gentleman needs tattoos. I tell you if you keep this man is drawing you do. Tomorrow, today, weaving in and out. Magic of the moon, money, in the fifteen. Come, he is calling you, do. Doesn't matter if you're fat in your onion head hat. Never stop you when your castle turns to sand. Hope that big pants, those cardboard shanties and tents, 
Apple drink, Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Coke. Good morning, DJ says democracy is a joke. I'm just gonna keep saying, guys, talk about miniature painting. One, two, hey. The lairs holding the mums and serving the food. What the hell are you do? Send a car to find you if you ever lose your way. Actually sabotaging my live stream. Okay, let's darken up some parts here. As suggested earlier, I grab some more of this burnt umber with a little bit of terra rosa in it to warm it up. Much. We're gonna we're gonna darken in these eyeballs even more. Oh, we already listened to this one. A symphony in C. Let's see. 
I'm just kind of going back and forth with this piece right now. So I'm just keeping adding some shadows, adding into it right now to kind of get it a little bit more contrasted. Probably maybe even add a little bit of black into that part there. Well, I guess your lips are some down to the bottom of the sea. Let me grab, I got some like Payne's gray up here. Let's even make this even darker. I'm gonna make this even darker in here. Hello. slip down everything about you will talk I want to love you madly I want to love you now Let's look at that helmet again in black and white. Hmm. It doesn't add that whole skull area it needs to be brought up even more, doesn't it? Take a quick break and I'll be back. We're gonna kind of work on a little bit more of the uh, this part of the helmet here. That's gotta be kind of the brightest part of this whole helmet, right? This, this, this bit right here. Or maybe like this area in general. We'll see what I can do, but I will be back in just a minute.
This is like one of my favorite covers. Oh. Destruction. Yeah. Oh, what the heck? What is that? What just happened? Apparently Twitch decided to start playing. Thank you. Thank you, Twitch. All right. Oh. Be tricksy. I know I need this to be up. Satan laughed and laughed his wings. Oh, Lord, yeah. I don't really want to play rock band. <laughs> oh, man, I freaking loved playing rock band. They need to make they needs to make another version of that game. I would totally buy it for the next this current generation. I'm, music rights are so freaking out of this freaking crazy complicated. These older music games had a little easier. It wasn't quite so ludicrous to license all of that stuff dancing prancing dutch baby Night. 
Pass the test just like all the rest. Here we go. If you don't sing along to this, then you have no joy in your heart. I guess I need kind of all of that to be brought up a little bit more. Um, I can try to throw in the gold and see what happens. This might be a huge mistake. I'm going to kick this to black and white. Help me. Are your parents in this income tax bracket? Even heard of. You heard of them first. Well, but you are not. Bring 
Do I need to bring that even higher? Cans of red, white, and blue wine. Some brand new components. Through town, Through town, things don't like to lose people. Things don't like to lose people.
He's at God. Well, I got around last night to watching the newest. Spiders Man, and for the most part, I say I enjoyed it. I think the opening shots were really bad. Did they have? I'm really curious, like if they had guest directors or something, because it was you know like combining three, um, you know three Spiders Man, because. It kind of looked like they were doing a bad take on Sam Raimi fam work. I I was just really confused by some of those opening shots in the Spider-Man movie. And kind of just have to blame the entire movie on Doctor Strange not taking two seconds to talk about a alternate world reality altering bell with a teenager seems like he should have maybe have talked to him about the consequences before starting all of that but i thought it was really cute once all the spiders man met together and they started talking i thought that was really cute I think they should have should have done a little bit more of that. I think they should have had like a little bit of a friendly kind of like competition or something. I think that would have been a little a good like third act break or second act second act break. It's been a good second act break. that looking better I still feel like this down here looks way too quick value contrast I'm gonna like I said I'm gonna probably end up glazing a little bit of gold over that because I the way it looks right now it's just a little too extreme for my taste Or before I give up on this helmet, this I need that. Mm, okay, okay. Hold on, I think I got. I think I got a. 
brainwave brainwave let's see if, let's see if i can so if i want to do like that i need this to kind of come out further than i have it idea right is that curved surface outside of the breaks because of the shadow That I think looks better. I'll even cut it a little further in here. And grab just a little bit of this white. highest right there Excuse me, I think I got it. This cannot be denied. Excuse me. Excuse me, I think I Pick up the uh, black and white again here. Mm. All right. Well, I am more happy with that. So I can't believe really spent as much time as I did on all of this, but it needed done. 
Let me kind of give a look through everything here. Some of this, I think, needs a bit of Thank you. All right, hopefully that's looking better than it was earlier today. Let's see if I can look at it from far off. This will definitely need to be knocked down. Go ahead and do that and right now because that's way too bright for this side. I know we listened to this one already. <laughs> like 60 cake songs. So I think next step on this is I'm going to move away from the gold, start filling in all these gems, make this part more interesting. So like the red here is kind of, I got to kind of maybe re-engage some of this, kind of get into some of this red more, but this I need to make maybe a little bit more interesting. I'll do that first, and then it's going to be a bunch of gem work because he's got gems. There's three on each finger. They're all over the place. That's going to be a lot. That's going to be a big, big part. And since I'm not going to be messing with this side for a bit, go ahead and try to 
edge work here. Second curve. Curve. I really don't think I'm going to spend much time on the backside of this freaking thing. I mean, I'm going to put all the stones and stuff, but like, I'm not going to like highlight it up because I don't want this to have like a really strong directional light. All right, let's get out of here, guys. I've tortured you off enough for the last like hour or so, just kind of singing to myself. Um, so here, here's where we're at so far. We got more work done. Let's do another quick black and white here. All I really used on all of this was some Terrarosa, some burnt umber. Uh, some brilliant yellow pale with just a touch of cad yellow every now and then and then the uh, iridescent white to like do the higher highlights um, might push in just a little bit of you know what I kind of like now that I saw that let me, let me grab a little bit of this Terra Rosa I'm looking at that Terra Rosa up here, that little hint of it. I'm liking that. I want it, I want it like here a little bit. Here a little bit. Gotta put it in a couple spots. There we go. Give a little bit of I like having just a little bit of alternate color in some of this. All right, all right, I gotta stop fiddling with it so I can let everybody go. Who is streaming right now, everybody? We've got Rainer, we got Wapelli sponsored. I haven't rated Rainer in a while. Let's see, is he? Of course, it's gonna be an ad. But we're just gonna go say hi to Rainer. 